GPG encryption for Windows, what happens if Keybase disappears, free SSL certificates, and how you could end up in prison for withholding your decryption keys. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. And we are talking about one of our favorite things today. Ponies. In Encryption. <laughs> encrypting ponies. Encrypting See? ponies. En encryption can be used for all sorts of good <laughs> and evil Ooh, ponies. Like no. Uh, <laughs> this uh, awesome story that we just talked about on ThreatWire, it's a Krebs and Security blog. You should go and check it out to where he went to Mexico and discovered all sorts of interesting things about oh, ATMs. Yes. We're familiar with ATM scams where like there's attachments on it and stuff. I'm obsessed with his blogs about ATM skimmers. It's so good stuff. he recently went to Mexico. He found out that uh, there's this whole gang of people that have been installing these uh, ATMs with Bluetooth embedded devices inside of them. And it turns out that it's not just happening over plain text whenever they're collecting this information via Bluetooth onto like a smart device nearby, but it's actually encrypted. So even even if you hack the Bluetooth around these ATM machines, you have to have some kind of. It makes sense though, right? You don't want the like, it. you know, if you're organized crime and you're like skimming ATMs, the last thing you want is some like, you know, uh, like rival gang yeah. <laughs> stealing your legitimately stolen ATMs. Right, you know, that would right. just be like, whoa. We're also talking about other fun iOS vulnerabilities, including uh, stuff about AirDrop, as Ooh. well as some Android lock screen hacks that are really fun. <laughs> so check that over uh, out on ThreatWire, which is on the Hack5 YouTube channel. It's your source for security, privacy, and internet freedom. And we're very, very proud of it. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's so much fun. Yes. Uh, but first off, we really wanted to talk about feedback, because we talked about Keybase last week, uh, which we've talked about before, but this time it was discussing how to use it in the CLI right. for file encryption, not just text for email. So it was called Easy File Encryption with Keybase. We got a lot of great feedback yeah. and, and some ones that like spur some interesting discussions that I'd love to have. So let's go ahead and just start off. Yeah, so our first one comes from Jay. He said, great vid, is there a Windows equivalent? And it turns out, yes, there is. Yes, and this is one of the really beautiful things about using open frameworks as such, since Keybase is built on Node.js, which is available on multiple platforms, as well as the prerequisites, uh, most notably GPG, are available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And right. so if you're on the Windows platform, here's what you're going to need to do. Grab yourself a copy of GPG for Win. This is the same GPG that we know and love on the Linux platform. It's just the Windows version. And, and that's it also at gpgforwin.org slash download.ht. Yes. And it comes with this nice uh, little front end tool called Cleopatra, which Ooh. is a nice little GUI to help you manage keys and do encryption and decryption, things of that nature. Uh, otherwise, you're going to need Node.js, and that's pretty easy to do. You just basically get yourself uh, the node. At um, Node.js.org. Node.js.org, and there is a download for Windows right here. And it's pretty simple. It's, it's nice little installer. Um, you know, click, click, next, next. Bob's your uncle. And once you have all of that, it's the same exact commands that you might expect that we showed off last week as far oh. as installing. Yeah, that uh, npm command. Yeah. The npm install tac g keybase installer. All you have to do is make sure that you open up your node.js command prompt. So this right here oh, will be I new. See. You'll get a node.js command prompt. And from here, go ahead and issue those commands. What is it again? NPM. It's npm install space tacg space keybase dash installer. Which I've already done on this machine, but you know, why not do it again? And it should look very similar. And there we go. Now I can run keybase installer just as before. And we should also mention, if you run into any errors whenever you're using this, make sure that the GPG is in your path environment variable. Right. So that's good stuff. And hey, look at that. Now you have GPG, which kind of brings us to some other questions. I yes. So we had, we had another comment. I guess there's better ways to do NPM installs. Yes, there are. So this question was from, and I'm probably going to like just annihilate this the, name. I can't pronounce it at um, all. You know what? We'll just put it on the, no, we're going to put it on the screen. Let's not even try. I, I don't speak Cyrillic. 
<laughs> so he said, do not sudo npm tag g install. Change npm path to Your dot directory. slash, yeah, slash dot npm or something. Less sudo is better. Of course, that's always true. And you can replace install to a simple i, so npm i tag g key base will just work. And since you typed ls curvy.jpg, you could use a xdg tag open curvy.jpg from the same terminal, or even add alias open equals x xdg tack open to your uh, slash dot bash rc. Yes, aliases, we've terminal. covered those. Directory. Shannon has on Hack yes. Tip. There's a great one in one series if you're new to Bash. Aliases and are awesome. Thank you for providing those awesome tips. It's good stuff. And we got a message from the Capster who says, what DE are you using on your Ubuntu box? Because it looks sweet. That's right. I'm a huge fan of GNOME 3. Ooh. You can find that over at GNOME.org. It is the sexiness. And if you're doing it with Ubuntu, it's probably easiest to just install Ubuntu GNOME. You can find yeah. that over at UbuntuGNOME.org. It's a good desktop environment. It's pretty. GNOME. You know what? I really G also is off, totally off GNOME. track, but I what? also love elementary OS. If you guys haven't really? checked this out, um, it's basically like the equivalent. It's, it's OK, so imagine if OS 10 and Ubuntu had a baby. <laughs> that's, that's that's pretty amazing. much it. It is it's just I'm surprised gorgeous. you like it. Well, okay, Do so you like it because it's pretty. I like it because it's pretty, but I also <laughs> like it because it's Ubuntu under the hood, which I know and love. Mm -hmm. And so as far as like newbies getting into it, I feel like it it's like oh. the new up and coming, like I, I'm recommending this over hmm. mint now. I should mention that on tech thing. I will also point out that if you um if you like to fiddle under the hood, it's really easy to break. Oh, so sweet. Just keep you that know in mind. that, huh? Yeah. From experience. From experience. <laughs> so kind of like a Mac, you, you you get what you get, and you know, if you want to have fun, well, prepare. Be prepared to have a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we should get back <laughs> to it, though. All right. So uh, I really like this question. It was from Samurai Twelve Hundred. He said, "What happens if Keybase disappears?" I have to agree. That's a great question. It is. We hate relying on proprietary stuff, and this yeah. is why Keybase Trust is so no great one. because it's built on open standards, in particular, OpenPGP. So here's the brilliant thing about this, and and you know also the fact that uh, Keybase is open source. You can yeah. find there's all like that installer, that entire program, the CLI, that is up on GitHub right now, and you can peer review it, and you can continue it to your heart's content. Um, and so even if it does disappear, what's really cool about the way that it's creating like a social network of encryption is that it's building on these open standards. Yeah. So if, for instance, Keybase were to just disappear, all of your encrypted files that you used uh, Keybase to help you generate would not disappear. You'd still have them on your hard drive. Because you uh, could keep using like GPG, for example, right? And you and since they're yeah, and since they're um, encrypted with GPG, it's mm -hmm. really just a front end. So GPG is not going away anytime soon. And even if Keybase disappears, your messages will still be a okay. Um, and because it is open source, it's less likely to just disappear overnight. Because yeah. as long as there are developers and maintainers that want it to exist, it will. It will. It will. <laughs> and we also got a message from. He said, what's up with the UK thing? Ouch. <laughs> yeah, maybe I just kind of slipped that by a little you too quickly. You kind of did. Easily. It sounded like a diss on the UK. It, it's not. I love the UK. And actually, I fly through London Heathrow all the time because it's one of the oh, least expensive. Oh, you're so cool. You fly through the airport. <sighs> no, I fly through <laughs> London Heathrow because it's an inexpensive way to get into <laughs> Europe. So you start in the UK and then you bounce around. Um, the Netherlands is also pretty good as well. Uh, Amsterdam, <laughs> triple. The, regardless, I, I actually, like the tinfoil hat in me is all like, I wonder if all the flights are really inexpensive through London Heathrow as a means to catch would-be encrypto criminals. That's right, because as we know from the NSA, uh, if you're using encryption cross borders, well, we're going to have to store copies of that because obviously you're doing something you shouldn't. What right. have you got to hide? <laughs> uh, which brings up uh, an interesting read on key disclosure laws. Uh, specifically, there's mandatory key disclosure uh, as well as uh, mandatory decryption. And both Ew. of those are very scary. Yeah. Uh, so specifically to the UK, the regulation, uh, the regulation Investigatory Powers Act of 2000, otherwise known as RIPA, it requires persons to supply decryption information and or keys to the government representatives when they have a court order. And failure to do so carries a penalty maximum jail time of two years uh. in prison. That is some scary stuff. 
Uh, this provision was first used against animal rights activists, AKA, or so Wikipedia says in 2007, and since it's been used to jail at least three people who have been prosecuted over this, uh, in including like one uh, developer who was just not going to give up his encryption key, so he ended up serving 13 months. There was also a Jeez. minor, same thing happened to him. So. Yeah, I was just reading the articles on this and so messed up. So they jailed a schizophrenic person for refusal to decrypt their files. That's the developer. So, so screwed up. And then the second one yeah, is and then they put a him kid. In a yes, this is, it, it's kind of messed up. It's, uh, it, it really varies by country. Um, the United Kingdom is a good example of like what happens when things really go wrong. Yeah. But uh, you know, check out the Wikipedia article on this because it's not just the UK. It's also Australia and Belgium and Finland and all of these other places. Thankfully, in the United States, we have this amazing thing called the, the Fifth Amendment <laughs> to our Constitution, which <laughs> protects <laughs> witnesses from being forced to incriminate themselves, which is really good. You hear it in the Miranda rights every time. It's like you have the right to remain silent. Right. And so remaining silent is really good and also includes giving up your decryption key. Mm or at least that has been the case so far. so far. Hopefully case law did not change that yeah. uh, anytime soon. Um, suffice it to say, yes, when I, when I go through the UK with my encrypted laptop, as I always travel internationally with an encrypted laptop, uh, I am aware, <laughs> I'm keenly aware of the risk. Mm -hmm. And that sucks because that's where your morality and your ideals hit up against the harsh reality that is the law. Uh, so maybe I should start going in through another country. Uh, speaking of which, I, I was visit the, I was just I doing research on a uh, Veracrypt, the mm. basically like the baby of TrueCrypt, and uh, they give you the ability to do hidden volumes. So you can encrypt a volume and then do a hidden volume inside of that that's also encrypted. So when they unencrypt the larger volume, it looks like there's nothing else right. there. Right. This is an amazing uh, uh, response to that which is called plausible deniability. Yeah, plausible deniability. And so deniability. the reason being, okay, so maybe you don't do full disk encryption or whatever, but maybe you have some volumes on your hard drive where uh, you've got w VeraCrypt yeah. uh, volumes, and when you go to decrypt them, you have two passwords. One password unlocks the source codes of the stuff that you don't want the government to have, and the other one unlocks photos of ponies. <laughs> and then they're all like, oh, well, we get it. You're just one of those pony encrypting people. <laughs> you should be a pony encrypting people. Yeah. Speaking of encryption, oh my God, free encryption for everyone. This Let's is encrypt. so exciting. Let's encrypt. So this cool. is, uh, if you're not aware of the Let's Encrypt project, you should check it out over at letsencrypt.org. This is put on by the EFF as well as many other awesome people who are coming together to say, hey, you know, uh, Mozilla, Akamai, Cisco, EFF, uh, they're saying, hey, like, why? is it that SSL certificates are so complicated mm -hmm. and so expensive? And so it's like, why don't we change the whole thing and make SSL free as we should all be running SSL? I know we are on uh, forums at hack5.org yeah. and hack5.org and hackshop.com and all of the stuff that we do. But again, it's expensive and complicated and you have to pay for these certificates and you have to keep them updated and there's renewal fees and there's complications and depends on your web server. There's all these different ways to install them uh, <laughs> correctly and incorrectly even. And so the concept here is to create a free and automated and open system for providing encryption keys to everyone. And it's not quite live yet. But they did do their first one, though. Yes, the first one. You can actually head over to helloworld.letsencrypt.org and you'll get this. Oh. It works. You just have to go to advance and proceed because it's not uh, basically the certificate authority. Um, oh. <laughs> the, there needs to be an intermediary that is the ISRG uh, root certificate. Right. Uh, it needs to be installed in the browser or needs to be supported by all the browser people. And that is coming and then everything will be happy. Yay, chains of trust. Yay! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With that, we're gonna take a quick break and when we get back, ponies. Domain.com and .club came to Hack5 with a great idea. Build a club all about learning stuff, making things, and having fun. So we've been hosting open houses at the Hack5 warehouse through hackhouse.club. And with the help of domain.com and .club, we've taken it to the next level with the quadcopter arena of doom. From land parties, drone racing, and battle arenas to 3D printing, software-defined radios, and let's not forget barbecue, hacking is just plain better when it's social. 
Dot Club gets it, and they are the perfect social domain. Whether it's IRC or clubs in RL, it's all about coming together and having fun. So what better domain to do it than a Dot Club? It's perfect because a Dot Club is universally and globally understood. So if you're looking for the ultimate social domain, consider a Dot Club. So join us this summer in the San Francisco Bay Area and bring your mini quadcopter to the arena for DroneBattle.Club. We're setting up the leaderboard, so show us what you've got. And what's your dot club? Let us know and we'll share it with the Hack5 audience and help spread the word. Get yours over at Domain.com slash club. They're only $9.99 a year and there are thousands of great domains available. And be sure to use the coupon code HAK5 to get 15% off and let them know we sent you. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack5, but before we get going, I want to invite you all here to have fun with quadcopters and have a little land party goodness, and you can find out all the deets over at Hack, H-A-K, house.club. <laughs> That's where you can sign up. You have to get in on the newsletter action yes. so that you can know all of the tasty deets about how you can come down here and barbecue with us and bring your puppies. It's going to be a good time. Mm-hmm. 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 Also, feedback at hack5.org. Have you heard of this email? I have. That's where you I can email us day. all the things that you want us to hear about. Yes, as well as all Maybe the little all the lively things. comments. I love that we get such great and insightful and yeah. not not troll comments. They're really great. Because I ban <laughs> trolls. Ban them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> With that, hack5.org slash follows where you can find all the social networks and stuff that we hang out on. Get banned. <laughs> By Shannon on Twitter, it's good stuff. <laughs> you have not lived until you have. <laughs> True. I haven't banned you yet, so you haven't lived yet. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling left uh, out. It just means you're cool. <laughs> it's all right. You're OG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you're OG. Oh, no. You win. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, let us know what you'd like to see, and with that, uh, we will be back next week. Until then, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technologist. You just got banned. Did you do, do what? What? No. You're unbanned. Just for now. You're K-lined. <laughs>